Hello my little butterflies and this video is going to be a poetry video. So y'all, I'm on a road today. I think this is video number freaking four, okay? Today, all right? So I just wanted to do one more video because I had one more piece of my costume. And I was like, I need to do it now while I'm in the mood of recording before, you know, I've done uploading that last video with item number three. And then it's like weeks down the line before I put item number four, okay? And I was going to do a review, but then I was like, you know what? We haven't done a poetry video in a while, so let's record some poetry and... Yeah, I call this Invisible Intruder. It feels weird, y'all. It's been a while since I read my poetry in front of the camera. It feels really weird. I did post this poem on my Bookstagram page a couple weeks ago, too, already. So if you follow me on Bookstagram, you've probably seen it already. But I just want to give it, you know, give it to y'all real quick. Have you ever had that feeling that something invisible is chasing you? Not just chasing you, but about to grab you. But you can't turn around to see it. And your body is telling you to run as fast as you can. And then it has the audacity to whisper its name before it eats you alive. And I know you're thinking, Sis, if it whispered to you that shit might be more than just invisible. And you're right. My attacker is only invisible to those looking from the outside in. My attacker is anxiety and the bitch never travels alone. She sometimes brings her twin along depression. I wasn't created this way. I used to be able to walk up to any stranger and talk until their ears bled. But what changed? Maybe I was too sheltered. Told that I was too friendly and that's how girls get stolen. Told so many times that ladies were meant to be seen and not heard. What if I don't want to be a fucking lady though? What if that's not what I'm meant to be? What if I just want to be me? Anxiety creeps in whenever I try to speak. I can't even say hello without him crawling up my skin ready to dig his claws into my flesh and rip out whatever piece of confidence I had left. Ripped out like my trust for men was ripped out from between my legs when I was 16. Somebody I knew and trusted, not a stranger, who told me my nose and please to stop with me just playing hard to get. Ripped out like my respect for men were ripped out of my soul when I told my so-called boyfriend at the time what happened to me. And he in return told me to stop lying and just to come out and say that I cheated. Who made a joke out of me instead of comfort me. So I buried that shit and put a band-aid on it only to have it constantly ripped off time after time after time. I buried that shit and put a smile on it only to have it wiped off time after time after time. But I can't seem to wipe off what I want to wipe off. After all these years, the dirt is still clinging to my skin, suffocating me without laying a hand on me. They say I should talk about it, but talking about it makes it real, and I just don't want it to be. I want to drag an eraser across my skin, through my memories, and wipe the slate clean. But life has never been that forgiving to me. And the funny thing is, I don't even expect it to be. So when I raised that in my head, it sounded a whole lot different than when I just sounded like listening to myself. Read it out loud. Um, but anyway, that is my poem, Invisible Intruder. And you know what the crazy thing is about this poem? When While I was writing this poem and I was reading it over in my head, I realized who my narrator voice was in my head while I'm reading this poem. I don't know if, if anybody else is like this, but when I write, like when I'm reading, I'm never reading in my own voice. It's never my voice I'm hearing in my head. And the sad part is, the funny thing about it is, the person that who it is that I'm reading it in is like, it's it's off right it's, it doesn't make any sense my my conscious like my my reading voice in my head when i'm reading my poems is conceited from wild and out if y'all watch wild and out i don't know if y'all do but like when he raps that's the voice in my head when i'm reading the poems in my head you was laughing at me being short after that divorce i don't know how he seemed so chill because that marriage was so short it makes me look like shaquille o'neal <laughs> Elgin, you think you gangster now. You should know your place. You so short, even if you were a G, it would be a lowercase. <laughs> Waggy P, you in the league, so I know you getting green, but your career like your phone on silent, cause you never gonna get a ring. Oh. Neo. This is wild style, Neo. Mm -hmm. You know I'm the best, Scrap. It seemed like your hairline dropped out of school by the way it got left back. <laughs> So that was the funny thing that made me realize that. But anyway, um, whew. that was the point about my anxiety pretty much. I don't have bad anxiety. I know a lot of people on Booktube say they have anxiety. My, I don't think my anxiety is crazy. It's not like stiffening anxiety, but it feels like somebody like drop kicks me in my chest. Like when it does take in. And it usually happens when it's in conversation with people that I don't usually have conversation with. Like if it's hard for me to make new friends so it's like when I was in school 
the one year that I did in college, when I went to classes and I didn't know anybody there, it's like, dang, I want it. And you hear like conversations going on, you know what you want to say, but you scared to jump in and say it. It's like I couldn't breathe. It's like something was just like stopping me from breathing. It's like it's hard for me to catch my breath. And I was just like, damn, like, okay, I'm not going to say nothing. Like, I'll be quiet. So I don't have like stiffening anxiety because I know it's not to the point where I need medicine for it but I have it um and it's crazy because my mom had anxiety and my older brother had anxiety and his son my nephew has anxiety he has it really bad he don't really care for crowds but it's like I don't my anxiety isn't bad like that and it's not like controlling my life but when it happens it does it kind of does control my life because it's hard for me to meet new people like that I would never just walk up to people and talk to them like I don't know why and I used to be like this social butterfly like I would walk up to I would go knock on a neighbor's door and have a whole conversation you know out of nowhere I used to be that person where I could walk up to a random person and have an hour-long conversation with you and keep you engaged I'm just not that person anymore like, I feel like I need to be invited into a conversation for me to start talking like I'll be listening to the conversation and it's like I want to put my input and it's like anxiety it's like it just stops me like something just grabs me it's like shut up don't say anything like you know like if you say something something embarrassing is gonna happen and i think that's what goes on in my mind like i'm gonna say something i'm gonna look stupid so i'm just shut up not often it's not as bad as everybody else one so it, there's different levels to anxiety it's not all life-changing kind of anxiety you know i don't know i don't know how to say it but it's just something that I do. I used to be that person. I don't know what, I really don't know what happened. I don't know what to attribute it to, but yeah. Um, so, getting off of that heavy topic, the last item that I have for my Halloween costume that, if, once y'all see this, y'all gonna know. If y'all already don't know, this is the big item that you're going to know what the hell I'm gonna be for Halloween once you see this. And this is the shirt that I'm gonna wear, people. It's there's no hiding and if you don't know who I'm going to be after you see this shirt you're too young for this channel so I can't deal if you don't know all right all right so this is the shirt that I'm wearing for Halloween all right I want to hear y'all vote I want to if y'all don't know what I'm going to be by now especially after seeing this shirt you don't need to be watching my channel okay cool cool all right so, if you guys don't know, the first thing that I had was an orange wig. The second item that I showed you were green cargo shorts. The third item that I showed you were purple glasses. And now the fourth and final item that I'm showing you for my costume is my blue Saturn t-shirt. So, all of those items combined makes me give me a drum roll, please. Bucky <laughs> from the Rugrats, alright? I love the Rugrats. If y'all don't know what the Rugrats is, I don't know... How old are you? Okay, everybody knows the Rugrats. Okay, and I'm Chucky. I know most people are probably like, oh, why you aren't you Susie or, or Angelica? It's, I love Chucky. I've always loved Chucky. Chucky has always been my favorite Rugrat. So why would I not be him? So this is the DIY kind of costume because I didn't like the costumes that actually came like the packs that you'll find at Party City and. I didn't really like them, so I was like, I'm just gonna make it myself. I, I didn't like the wigs that they had for Chucky. Uh, they look more like troll hair than Chucky hair and I didn't like the glasses that came with them either So I was just like I'm gonna make it myself and it's gonna be exactly how I want it to look So thank you guys for watching my video that is all I would love to know what you guys are gonna be for Halloween If you're dressing up for Halloween, I love Halloween so I'm dressing up Um, and I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to like share and subscribe. Bye